APS-C versus full frame, which is better? This whole debate usually boils down to full frame is better quality but costs more, and APS-C is budget friendly but is worse quality, and that is simply not true. But what if I told you sensor size doesn't matter when it comes to quality, it does however matter as a creative choice. Because depending on what you're shooting, your style of shooting, and whether you're shooting photos or videos, sensor choice is a very, very important decision. So in this video, I'm going to compare full frame and APS-C in a real world test to really show you what the differences are. And I'll also go over which scenarios does it make sense to use each of these sensors for the best results. And I'll also be breaking down some of the lies and myths on YouTube about sensor size that is simply outdated information. So let's get into it. So what exactly is a full frame sensor and what exactly is a crop slash APS-C sensor and what are the major differences? A full frame sensor is about the same size as a 35 millimeter piece of film from a stills camera. Believe it or not, before digital photography, we actually used to shoot photos on pieces of plastic like absolute savages. And a crop or APS-C sensor is the size of early digital camera sensors, and that is the standard that has stuck around over the years. And sometimes an APS-C sensor or crop sensor is also known as a Super 35 sensor, but that's mainly something you see in video cameras. The reason it's called Super 35 is because it's the same size as motion picture 35 millimeter film that was used in movies. 35 millimeter motion film is smaller than 35 millimeter full frame or 35 millimeter stills photo film, it can be a bit confusing, but just know that full frame is the same size as 35 millimeter stills film and super 35 or APS-C and crop is the size of 35 millimeter motion film for movies. Now size doesn't always matter, bigger isn't always better, but in this one scenario, size is actually a huge factor in the kind of photos and videos you can get from each of these sensors, but also the kind of lenses you can use, and using the wrong sensor can actually completely ruin your photos and videos, and whether you're just shooting casually, vacation, kids, or you're shooting something more creative, the right sensor size can lead to some pretty massive differences in terms of creativity. Now the quality myth has always kind of stuck around when it comes to full frame versus APS-C, and most people think that full frame usually has more megapixels because it's a larger sensor, and about 10 years ago that was true. A larger sensor could fit more megapixels, and a smaller sensor generally had less resolution and fit less megapixels. But it's the future now. And now we have APS-C sensors that are 40 megapixels, APS-C sensors that are 32 megapixels, and you have full frame sensors that are only 20 megapixels. So it's really not about the sensor size anymore, but really about the specific camera you're using. But just in case you're new to cameras and megapixels, each sensor has millions of little pixels that collect light data. You can think of them as millions of little eyes on that little sensor, and that is how your camera sees an image. But if it's not a quality difference, then why do people pay thousands of dollars for a full frame camera? And why is it that the world's best photographers and filmmakers all want to shoot full frame or on the largest sensor possible? Well, it really comes down to the unique look of each sensor. And there's actually a case to be made for why full frame is better for certain types of shooting scenarios and why APS-C is better for other shooting scenarios. So let's talk about the differences between the look of each sensor and which scenario each sensor is right for. First up is the field of view or angle of view. Because a full frame sensor is much larger than an APS-C, as you might expect, a full frame sensor can generally see a lot more than an APS-C camera can. So using the exact same lens on a full frame sensor will give you a significantly wider image where with an APS-C sensor, you'll get a much narrower field of view or a much tighter image. But that doesn't make full frame better, but rather it matters if you want a wider photo or not. If you're shooting a wide landscape, having the widest photo possible is a good thing. Or if you're shooting portraits, you can use a wider image to show more of the environment around your subject and make the photo feel more immersive. But at the same time, maybe you want to isolate your model or subject for a specific kind of feel to your photo, and sometimes a full frame image is simply too wide, and in order to get a closer shot, you have to get closer to your subject, and you simply cannot get closer. In that case, it would be better to have an APS-C sensor where your photo is naturally closer and tighter to your subject. And it's really helpful for shooting subjects that are really far away. And shooting the same subject from far away on a full frame sensor, you'll have to crop into your image 
thus reducing resolution and quality of your image. So it's actually better to start off already close to your subject by using an APS-C sensor. And things get really tricky when you're shooting video with full frame or APS-C. APS-C or Super 35 is generally what most movies for decades have been shot on, and Super 35 or APS-C has a specific kind of look. It has a specific field of view, and with that, you use specific lenses, and it leads to a specific kind of visual language in your videos. And with full frame, sometimes you're too wide, you're not really speaking a cinematic language, but as I say that, there are directors out there like Christopher Nolan who shoots everything on IMAX or for example, the Joker was specifically shot on the largest sensor possible so they can use zoom lenses and get a bigger field of view to get a specific look. So when it comes to video, you have to think about the visual language that you're speaking when you're shooting your video and what sensor size is right for you. APS-C is going to give you tighter images, more intimate shots, where full frame is going to give you more epic and more grand shots, and maybe that is right for your project. But a lot of times, if you're shooting video and you want to create something cinematic, some of the best cinema lenses out there are actually only made for Super 35 and APS-C sensors, so if you want access to those lenses, you should be using Super 35. But from this, you can actually see that choosing the right sensor is more of a logistical factor to your creative vision than a quality difference. And you have to make sure that you use the right sensor for the specific kind of lenses you're using because lenses, as we all know, have some of the biggest impact on your photos and videos. So let's talk about lenses because that's what it really boils down to, lens selection. And let's also talk about this myth that says full frame gives you more of that blurry background effect, which simply isn't true. Well, it's kind of half true. What full frame does do is give you a wider field of view. So if you're shooting portraits, you can use a higher focal length like a 50 or an 85 and still have plenty of space around your subject. And when you have so much space around your subject, you naturally want to push in and get closer to your subject. And by actually getting closer to your subject, you get a more blurry background effect. So it's not because of the sensor, but more so a byproduct of how you use that sensor. If you took the exact same lens, put it on an APS-C sensor, your photo will be much closer to your subject and much tighter. So naturally, you're going to want to move away from your subject and get further back. And the further away from your subject you are, the less of that blurry background effect will be as prominent. And something that I just recently learned, and I've been shooting for years, is that a full frame lens also tends to just have a wider front diameter or intake iris compared to an APS-C sensor, which normally has a smaller front diameter and a smaller intake iris. And generally, the larger your intake iris, the more blurry background effect you get. So part of the reason that people believe that full frame gives you more blurry background effect is also because full frame lenses are bigger, but it really comes down to the lens and not the sensor. In my opinion, Full frame is great for portraiture. Full frame is great for wide landscape shots. APS-C is much better for things that are further away like sports, action, wildlife. But ultimately, it really depends on how you want to use the sensors. And another thing that a lot of people say is that full frame is better in low light because it's a larger sensor. This is actually true. This is 100% accurate. Because you have a larger piece of sensor, you're going to be able to collect more light and get better signal to noise ratio. But APS-C technology has actually come a long way and it's no longer as far behind full frame in low light as it was before. Technology has evolved. Most full frame sensors that are really good at low light generally have a much lower megapixel count. This way, each megapixel is wider and larger on the same size sensor and this way each megapixel can collect more light but you're generally getting a really low megapixel count, like 10 or 12. A good example is the Sony a7S III or the Sony FX3. Using a low resolution full frame sensor does work, but it's kind of old tech. And what I actually recommend doing is looking into newer sensors that have dual native ISO. This means you can shoot photos and videos at 800 or even as high as 12,800 and still get perfectly clean images. A good example is the Canon R6 Mark II, which can shoot very clean images with virtually no noise up to 12,800 ISO. And the R6 Mark II actually has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. So if I had to choose an FX3 with a 12 megapixel sensor or an R6 Mark II with a 24 megapixel sensor, 
I'm going with the R6 Mark II. Now, the most important thing I wanna talk about in this video and the thing that bothers me the most is the fact that people always say that full frame is for professionals, it's bigger, it's bulkier, and APS-C is for casuals, but it's smaller and cheaper. That's simply not true. This is a Canon R6 Mark II. This is a chonky, fat, professional camera. This is an A7C. It still has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. This also has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. And on top of that, the A7C is actually the same size as the A6500. And the A6500 is an APS-C camera. So really what it comes down to is finding the sensor that you wanna use and the body that it comes in. So when you're picking out your next camera, don't think of full frame versus APS-C as a quality thing. Think of it as what kind of content am I shooting? What kind of lenses do I wanna use? And what kind of body and design do I want for my camera? With that being said, guys, I'll see you in the next video. And if you wanna check out any of the cameras that I talked about in this video or the cameras that I use in this video, I'm gonna leave links in the description down below for the best pricing possible. So make sure to check that out. Peace.